If you look up the name Margaret Brown, what you most often find is American socialite or survivor of the Titanic after her name. And while both are true, the life and activities of Margaret Brown far exceed those two descriptions. I'd like to introduce you to a woman who is a pioneer in activism, a champion for children in need, the rights of workers and women, and a truly independent and headstrong woman. Born in Hannibal, Missouri, July 18, 1867, Margaret was the third child of five that were born to Irish Catholic immigrants John and Joanna Tobin. She had the benefit of attending school until the age of 13, thanks to the progressive thinking of her parents. She began working in a factory around this same age and quickly began to see the desperate plight of her family and her community when it came to the low wages and bad conditions in the world surrounding her. Margaret was full of dreams for a better life and opportunity, so at the age of 18 she left home with her brother Daniel and headed to Leadville, Colorado with the hopes of turning her dreams into cash. She worked in a local department store in Leadville and became active in the community. She saw firsthand the dark realities of what the mining culture had to offer, low wages and harsh working conditions, and her dreams of wealth turned into involvement in soup kitchens and charity work for the miners and their families. In 1886, she met J.J. Brown, a mining engineer with brains and goals, but no fortune. They were married on September the 1st, 1886. In 1893, with the onset of the silver crash, Leadville became a place of extraordinary poverty and instability. It was at this time that J.J. discovered gold in the Little Johnny Mine, and the Browns became millionaires. The couple moved with their two children to a home they purchased on Pennsylvania Avenue in Denver, but the less fortunate were never far from her sights. Wanting to make a difference, Margaret teamed up with other like-minded individuals to create public baths and advocate for more public parks and city improvements. She also worked with Ben Lindsay, a local judge who pioneered the first juvenile court system west of the Mississippi. Margaret was a charter member of the Denver Women's Club, an organization whose mission it was to help improve women's lives by providing access to education and charitable efforts. At this time in her life, she became well-versed in the arts, fluent in French, German, Italian, and Russian, skills that served her well in travels abroad as well as when the Titanic sank. Although unsuccessful in getting the captain of lifeboat number six to turn around to rescue more from the waters, once on the Carpathia, she was able to converse with many of the lower class passengers to help with immediate needs, and through her philanthropic efforts, had raised $10,000 to help them from fellow well-to-do travelers by the time they had reached the shores of New York. She was a tireless activist for women's suffrage and better working conditions for miners. After her Titanic fame, she was called on by the miners in Ludlow, Colorado, who had been on strike against the Colorado Fuel and Iron Company for dangerous working conditions and extreme hours. In April of 1914, this came to a head when workers and private guards hired by the company broke out in battle. Twenty people, including women and children, were killed. The company was part of the Rockefeller conglomerate, and Margaret went to Ludlow to try to help. She truly walked a fine line and refused to get sucked in by the radicals on both sides. She did not call for the resignation of the governor like the workers asked, but she was able to get Rockefeller to see the errors in his business practices, and he eventually agreed to make concessions. In 1914, Margaret ran for a seat in the U.S. Senate, but ended her campaign when World War I broke out. She returned to France to work for the American Committee for Devastated France. After 22 years of marriage, she and J.J. quietly signed a separation agreement, but remained married. She continued on with her philanthropic work for the rest of her life. When J.J. died in 1922, she moved to New York City and was living in the Barbizon Hotel, famous for housing Ingrid Bergman and Candace Bergen. She was following her dreams and passion of acting when she died in her sleep in 1932. A later autopsy revealed she had a brain tumor. She was buried in New York with her husband in the Cemetery of the Holy Rood. Margaret Brown was truly a woman before her time, headstrong, independent, longing to make a difference in the lives of those around her. Her legacy is truly larger than the Titanic and will live on in ways that still make a difference. 
After her death, she was given the name of the unsinkable Molly Brown. Called Maggie by most of her friends, her legend encompasses so much more than her brief stint aboard the famous passenger ship of all time.